let's talk about the Meg 2, The Trench. Okay, I, I saw the original Meg, I believe it was 2018 this movie came out. No expectations whatsoever. Uh, went and saw it at uh, the Regal in 4DX. Uh, <laughs> it, and do you know what 4DX is, Alan? Yeah, yeah I've okay. been on that many times. 40X is like watching a movie while being on a theme park ride. You get these special 40X chairs. You can even actually change the settings. You can turn off the wet and you can dial back the sort of intensity. I go full intensity. I don't care. And what's cool about these chairs is they kind of like move you around. They vibrate. They, they If there's an explosion, it kind of throws you back and the chair shakes. It's uh, I, I like 40X. I know it's a gimmick but it works for certain movies and they'll even do like water effects. So you'll feel like a little spray on you. If they're like jet skiing or whatever, you'll feel like a spray. It's, I mean, the whole audience, it, yeah. it is cheesy. You pay a premium. It's like 30 bucks to see a 40. It's not movie. that much. It's not that much. Well, it used it to be 30 expensive. bucks. Yeah. It used to be 30 bucks, but now it's part of, they have all these programs, right? Yeah. So, I, I'll say I saw Top Gun Maverick in 40 X and it was amazing. See, that would also be a fun movie in 40X. So I saw the Meg in 40X and I knew it was a dumb movie. Jason Statham, uh, what's his character's name? Jonas. Yeah. It's um, it's super cheesy. It's it's bad. And I had so much fun with the first Meg because I knew what it was. It's like those, it's like those movies on sci-fi channel where they just get increasingly ridiculous. Or you mentioned earlier, Jurassic Shark 3, Sea Venge. Like, I I know what I'm getting into. In fact, I think maybe they could just go cheesier with the titles, okay? But I like the first Meg. I think, especially when it gets to the end, and it's like you've got the cute little dog, all the vacationers, they're all in peril. It's, you know, it's harmless fun. And it, it's also harmless fun while also it's not a great movie, but it's a movie that knows what it is. And Meg to the Meg to the trench is even more over the top. It's like, it's twice the Meg, so to speak. And I knew it was bad as I'm watching him. And it's like super cheesy. It starts out with, um, I mean, it's a, a super cheesy plot with like, Jonas's character is now part of this organization that they're like, uh, you know, eco warriors. So he's the good guy. And um, I don't even know the names of the characters. The Asian CEO, the Asian CEO guy who's like, has sort of kind of made friends with a Meg that, what, what's the name of the Meg uh, that they have? Oh, I it's a weird name and I don't remember. Hashi. I think it's Hashi. Something like that, yeah. Something like that, Hashi, that they've raised from like a pup. So, but it's it's enclosed in this space. Well, things go awry on a mission where they discover there's secret mining that's taking that's happening underneath where where they where they are at this at this science research facility, and they're mining secretly mining precious metals from under the ocean, making billions of dollars right under their nose. Uh, so they're in conflict with not just several Megs. There's like three Megs by the end of the film that they have to contend with. In, in addition to a an octopus, in addition to these almost raptor-like alligators, and the CG is bad, and they have to deal with these, the, uh, these rogue miners who are armed to the teeth going after them so they have to survive all of that along with basically alan's daughter is in the movie <laughs> there's a young girl who's tagged along right so it's super dumb the audience the audience laughed through the whole thing and what's interesting about this film is uh half the movies in chinese with subtitles now I don't care. I, I, I watch movies with subtitles all the time. Uh, I thought it was terrible and I had a great time. Does that make sense? It's sort of like going to, have you ever been to like the LA County Fair? It's awful. It's the worst. 
the rides are dumb. And there are people, and there's balloons and terrible food. And I love it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like that kind of thing. So uh, did I have a good time watching The Meg 2, The Trench? 100%. Was it a good movie? Hell no. There's so much logic you can pick apart. It just gets super dumb, especially at the end when um, the Asian CEO becomes, like, there's like literally the cliche of running away from the giant CG explosion in the background. Like, like it's just utterly ridiculous. What I am surprised about, what I am surprised about, just to point out a couple of things, and I want to get your take, Alan. How many women died in this movie? Oh, yeah. There were a lot. I mean, there's like, there, there were there, there. I didn't like the sort of first half of the movie was very dark because it takes place under the ocean. And they have these like suits that are like these almost power suits that they can be that deep under the ocean. They all science is out the window, by the way. It doesn't, nothing makes sense in it. But um, like, with, with, a lot of women, women die. So I do like that this is an equal opportunity exploitation movie. Normally there's like types of people where you're like, well, they're not going to kill that character. They're not going to kill that character. And the other character I really liked in the movie was, I didn't know his name. I'm just going to say it. The black guy. The black guy was great. He was great. He was, he, he's got like this backpack with all this stuff. He's prepared for this. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. He's got. He's got poison tipped bullets in his gun and he makes a reference to Jaws 2. It's stupid. This is a stupid movie. This movie earned its, its 0% rating, critics rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and to me, that's always like, it's either a red flag or like, oh, I have to see this now. I have to see how bad it is. I will say this. I, I think it could go more ridiculous you know what i mean like like i like uh, like trauma movies know how to do that they they go over the top and then they go double over the top so i, I thought it was fun and then the the last third of the movie is when it really gets over the top like like the before stuff wasn't over the top where they go to this resort called it it loosely translates to fun island it's an asian name but it's Fun Island. And it's all these like, I mean, there are a couple like really gratuitous, not complaining, gratuitous shot shots of women in bikinis running. Women in bikinis running. Which not going to complain about at all. It's almost reminiscent of like It's almost reminiscent of that, in a sense. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, I thought it was a great time at the movies. Not a good movie. Probably rate it like a four or a five. But it's weird to recommend a movie that I've rated so low. Had a great time. Know what you're getting into. You know what helps too? Just a couple drinks. Uh, I did not drink while seeing the film, but I thought, boy. This could sure use a couple of good beers. So, Alan, what did you think of the movie? You would recommend it, but give it a four. Well, it's terrible. I mean, it's at every level, it's terrible. But that's like trauma. All trauma films are like that. Mm -hmm. All trauma films are like this. Yeah. They're all oh, yeah. just, I mean, and some of the cheesy stuff, like, oh my God, like the stuff with the, um, at the end with the helicopter. Yeah. The stuff with Jason Statham, he's trying to take out, he's got three megs, he's got a jet ski, and he's got these explosive spears. It's Jason Statham battling three megs, and all he's got is a jet, and it's just, oh my God, there's one shot, the audience just laughed and clapped. It was full screening, by the way, in the Dolby Digital Cinema, and he's he's jumping on the jet ski, he's sort of like riding a wave, and he's got like the spear, and it's got, it's explosive, and it, like you just sort of going for the Meg. I do think um, someone mentioned in our group, and I agree, there could have been more creative kills. But oddly, the movie is rated PG-13. So I think an R-rated version of this that goes super over the top in terms of the gore 
would be better. I do actually think I like the Sharknado movies a lot. Um, I, I really enjoy those films. We've interviewed the director uh, and creator of Sharknado on the Film Thread channel. Look it up. It's Anthony C. Ferrante. And by the way, he used to write for Film Thread in the 90s. And then he's the creator of the Sharknado series. A lot of people pass through Film Threat and then go on to yeah. creator So, success. yeah. So if you want to write for Film Threat, uh, visit us at filmthread.com slash contact. And you will be the next franchise god. Well, you will be the next person who Alan will someday get to your email. Yes, one day. All right. But Alan, yeah. what did you think of the movie? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. Uh, I had fun, but uh, this is, it, it's it's very popcorn. It's a very popcorn movie. There's not a lot of depth to it. Um, I, I do like the fact, okay, so one of the benefits I had was uh, I saw it in 3D. And um, and I think for the most part, it's a pretty good movie to see in 3D. The, it, they do exploit it a little bit up at the beginning, but it kind of lays back. And I, I think it works well in the water sequences. Um, I do, it's kind of one of those things that there were all these movies back in the day that I thought were cool. And then they kind of brought all those cool movies together in this. For example, I think the first half of the movie is a lot like The Abyss. Um, and then, uh, and then at the end, it becomes this kind of Jaws, Crazy Rich Asians, um, Jurassic Park kind of mashup. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because when I saw Jaws and Jurassic Park and Abyss. I thought those were really cool movies. And to kind of see it in this and realize, wow, it's not as cool as I thought it was. Um, but again, just just had fun. Um, I will say this though. Um the uh I had more fun with this movie than Fast X. And uh, the biggest reason is is the cast of characters they get together. You know, of course they're gonna they're friends, they're gonna joke together, they're gonna bust each other's balls. Um, and I thought they did a really good job building this kind of chemistry and this kind of rapport with one another that that was a lot of fun to watch and not cringeworthy and groan worthy like like Fast X was. Um, you know, it, they were there just to have fun. They weren't there to kind of, you know, be a star of a multi billion dollar movie. Um, so so there we go. Uh, I had a good time, but you know, at, at some point, you know. I, I want a little bit more depth to my movies. So I'll, I'll go with that. That's First of all, that's a fair point. Mm -hmm. Totally fair point. But look, I feel like also with like, look, I, you cannot with a straight face tell anyone this is a good movie. It's 0% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. And I've seen better movies that attempt to do this. I'm saying I had fun at this movie. Know what it is. If you know yeah. what it is, look, it ain't Oppenheimer. Okay, this movie will win zero awards. So there you go. But uh, but, if, but you know if it's if it's if you're trying to get out of the summer heat, uh, this is a great movie to just kind of sneak into an air conditioned movie theater. And watch. Yeah, the best thing about this movie is the popcorn and air conditioning. Mm -hmm.